You are now listening to Firewall Chats with the IT ISAC. Today's guests are Ajay Barot, ISACA's Vice President of Strategic Partnerships and Business Development, and Shannon Donahue, ISACA's Vice President of Content and Development Services. Today's discussion is focused on learning more about who ISACA is and all they have to offer, the partnership between the IT ISAC and ISACA, and we'll also talk about the gap in cybersecurity skills and the impact this has on employers. Hello, and thank you for joining Fireside Chats. Um, AJ, Shannon, thank you for being our guest today. Uh, how are you doing today? Doing well, thank you, Scott. Good, thank you. Excellent. So first, um, we have this great relationship or great partnership between ISACA and the IT ISAC, which we want to talk about today. So first, can you t- talk a little bit uh, about what ISACA is, AJ, and perhaps um, t- tell us a little bit about yourself as well? Sure. I am um, Ajay Barot, um, joined ISACA about 18 months ago, um, spent the last um, 18 plus years in my career in strategy and business development with the primary focus around education and technology organizations. And um, ISACA is um, a global nonprofit um, that's been around for 50 years um, and is focused on um, serving a global community with about 150,000 members um, worldwide um, in 180 countries. Great, thank you. And, and Shannon, so we were talking offline before you, you have a pretty interesting background. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in ASACA. Sure. Um, I think like lots of security people, I didn't actually come into this thinking I was going to be in security. Um, my undergrad is actually in, in like exercise physiology. I wanted to be a physical therapist and um, quickly realized that was not for me. Um, I was lucky enough to meet some people and, and land a job at a company called Advanis, which was a joint venture between IBM and Sears. And um, really they did data processing and advanced telecommunications. So I quickly started working on um, SNA networks and then moving into multi-protocol environments, um, getting a bunch of Cisco certifications on the way and then moving um, on in my career to do uh, network and security incident response. Um, the company changed a series of times. It was very interesting. We went through IBM and then AT&T and then SBC bought AT&T and changed our name back to AT&T. And we were watching people leave. This is a, you know early 2000s, so um, a lot of outsourcing was happening. And one of um, my senior vice presidents who was um, left had called me and asked me if I wanted to come and do the security management at the college that she was at. I was finishing my master's in security at the time. And so I went over there to do uh, security and voice um, networks and operations. And so that was for about two years. And then I wound up talking to ISACA and they were looking for a security subject matter expert to come and lead their security research team. So that was 13 years ago. And I've been at ISACA ever since. And I have mostly been in the security area leading up the research programs, but I have moved around a little bit. I've been very fortunate to work with volunteers from all over the world and um, our our committees. Um, I've done our futures program at ISACA, which is really what um, we're looking into emerging technologies. And then I also launched and led the um, development of our technical cybersecurity program there. And now I am leading content development for all of our products. Super. So that that's probably a really good segue into my next question, which was tell us a little bit more about ISACA, right? So I think a lot of people know about ISACA as a training certification. So what else can you tell us about ISACA that people may not already know about? Um, well, ISACA is a wonderful organization. And as Jay had mentioned, it's been around for 51 years. We have um, over 550,000 um, engaged community um, I guess we would call them constituents, right? Never, not everybody's a member, but people come for training. They, they may come for a conference. Um, they might just come for webinars. Um, we have over 145,000 active members. Uh, and that is global, like Ajay mentioned. So we have um, 145,000 active members across, I want to, want to say 188 countries with about 222 chapters that are active. Um, and we really work to ensure that all of uh, of our community has access to to training or research or um, 
networking that's going to help them either develop new skills or hone the skills that they have so that they can continue to advance in their profession in the information technology space. Um, ISACA, um, as we had said, is a member organization and certainly has a heavy um, set of offerings for people who are individuals, but we also have services for their enterprises. And so we will do things like on-site training. We also have um, our CCP, which is our cybersecurity uh, maturity assessment tool, where organizations can um, access that and see where they have um, gaps in their resilience planning. So there is a lot of offerings, whether you're an individual or a member. Um, I think you had mentioned, Scott, certifications. We have a series of certifications. Our most well-known ones are our four core, which are our CISA, CISM, C-Guide, and C-Risk. There is over 231,000 uh, credentials that are have been issued across um, the world. And we've recently launched a new, or a new certification called our CDIPSI, which is our privacy certification. That is actually aimed at people who are three to five years experience and have experience doing technical privacy um, solutioning. And then this year, we're offering two new certifications and they're at different levels of your career. So in order to ensure that people who are entering the profession have adequate skills and knowledge, we're launching our IT associate certification, which is a stackable certification. So that means that it is a series of five certificates and um, they're all hybrid. So that means that Part of it is knowledge based and part of it is performance based where we will put you into our virtual machines and test your skills. So the five certificates are um, computing fundamentals, networks and infrastructure, cybersecurity fundamentals, software development and data science. So if you take all five of those certificates, you would be granted an IT associate certification. So we have a lot coming out this year. Um, we're going to continue to innovate and make as many creative uh, training opportunities as we can. We really want to make sure that we are getting those hands on skills to people so that um, they actually are able to come into the workplace and on day one make a difference. Yeah, super. Thank you for that. I mean, there's there's a lot there. I appreciate your, uh, your, your summarizing what ISACA does. So AJ, how do we um, explain or can, or can you explain where the partnership is between the ITI SAC and ASACA. There's so much uh, that, that's available uh, to ASACA. ASACA does so much. How is the ITI SAC uh, a partner with ASACA and how are we adding value to, 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 to each other? Absolutely. Um, great question, Scott. Um, I guess, first off, we're really excited about the partnership. Um, we've been able to forge with IT ISAC. As ISACA looks to extend its market reach beyond um, um, more into um, cybersecurity, we thought a, there was a natural adjacency to form a partnership with IT ISAC. Um, and so we, we've identified, or you know, as we were um, having conversations, opportunities, um, I, we believe um, um, for a partnership, obviously in the short term, but also for, um, broader partnership opportunities in the long term. So some of the immediate partnership opportunities we recognized was one to get started, um, began offering IT ISAC members our member rate on um, specific um, ISACA products, um, which uh, we shared with the IT ISAC team. So all those IT ISAC members listening to this could um, access and get familiar with. Um, and those are in the areas of um, cybersecurity and risk packages. Um, are um, also in the immediate term, um, all IT ISAC members can have access to our careers in cybersecurity and our security and risk articles and our MIT scissor research briefings that are available um, through the ISACA website. And then obviously um, invitations um, and opportunity to participate in our engage online forums. Um, so those are the immediate opportunities we see. And, and then obviously more in um, the near term, which we would kind of define as um, six months to a year out, uh, we see a, um, opportunities to partner on white papers um, and um, research and jointly engage in thought, broader thought leadership initiatives, um, particularly around things that Shannon and her team are working on as we gain insights into um, threats um, that are taking place um, in 
within cybersecurity that allows us to continuously um, further enhance and refine our products and services and certification offerings for this market. So we see um, a great deal of knowledge sharing that would be able to happen between both associations. Um, and um, broader strategic partnership opportunities long-term, um, you know, is, um, you know, what I just touched on before around more of a joint collaboration around ISACA product development with the focus on market intelligence and knowledge sharing. Um, and then I think more broadly, it allows an opportunity. We have um, a global community of ISACA members around the world. Um, and um, IT ISAC has um, a robust network of member communities, um, corporate and obviously um, those individuals within those corporations to begin um, hopefully long-term engaging with each other and helping foster and build our respective communities. Yeah, super. So thank you for that, AJ. I think it's from the IT ISAC perspective, um, we've been hearing from our members for a long time about the challenges and of getting the proper training for their employees, right? And this is really one of the a core tangible benefit that we're able to provide back to our members is this you know, opportunity to have a, um, a training at a at the member rate for for some of these critical certifications and training for, for member companies or their employees. So this, I think we've put in a, in a framework here that really helps both organizations uh, quite a bit. Um, and so we're really appreciative of it. And just a, a, a plug too, um, we've been doing some um, writing for your Nexus publication as well. So we, we worked with them and had a couple of articles published about the cybersecurity threat. And then most recently, earlier this week, uh, the part two, if you will, was released about steps companies can take to um, manage the threat. So um, it's really a good opportunity for us to get this security message and provide some of the subject matter expertise we have to a much larger community. And it's great for us to be able to, for our members to have access to your resources and your your training opportunity. So from our perspective, it's been working really well so far. So I want to thank you. Thank you for the work you've been doing on that. Um, You're very so welcome. While we're back on the topic of security training, um, AJ or Shannon, whichever one uh, you, you feel is most comfortable talking about it. So there's a widely acknowledged skills gap within the cybersecurity industry. And there's two parts on, of this, right? One is on the employee side, right? So um, and one is on the employer side, right? The skills gap affects both both ends. So can you talk a little bit about the skills gap that you're seeing? How big is it? Is it is it is it real? Um, and and how do we, if it is real, how do we go about addressing this? Yeah, sure. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, first of all, is it real? Yes. I, I all of the data points to, to yes, right? Um, every year, ISACA does do a state of cybersecurity survey, and then we launch the results in two parts. Um, one of our parts focuses on um, workforce dev and employment issues, and then also the second part focuses more on the threat landscape. Um, Interestingly, we do cover, there is some overlap between the two reports because some of the employment issues um, do affect how the threats are being handled at the organizations. Um, and I think, you know, originally we had talked about what is the biggest uh, skill that people are looking to hire for uh, coming up. And I will tell you, this has not changed. So in 2012, ISACA set up a committee and it was a, a group of CISOs. And we really wanted to talk about what we were gonna do in the cybersecurity strategy, right? And so when we brought these guys together, we were all talking and you know, what is your biggest problem? What is your biggest problem? Every single one of them told me that if um, their biggest problem was hiring and that when they would get all of these resumes and everything would look good and people would have the certifications that everyone thought they should have for the positions. But then um, when they'd get through the interview and bring the individuals in, that when the rubber met the road, then they did not have the technical skills that they needed to do the job. And so what had to happen was then, then the CISOs or the security managers or whoever's running the SOC had to pull this employee out and go back to train them for six months before they could put them back into being uh, contributing 
person within the SOC, right? So um, we are still seeing that. And in fact, I think our stat was like 78% of our cybersecurity uh, survey report respondents this year said that technical cybersecurity skills are the skills that they are still looking for. Um, and that that's what they will be hiring for. Now we did see uh, additional skills gaps. So people were saying that when they got applications into the organization to hire that, um, that 70% of the candidates weren't qualified and the deficiencies they were seeing were really across the board. Uh, technical skills, lack of hands-on skills, lack of soft skills, lack of business acumen. So there's a lot to do here. And I think, you know, um, Scott, you and I had talked a little bit about before, like some some people aren't coming into this profession um, as, a, as a naturally trained security professional, right? And so they're coming in sideways or from, from IT or from other, you know, financial audit, they're coming from all over the place. And so we really just need to, as a security community, we're going to really need to work together to skill these people the right way for the appropriate job. And I think that's where some of the frameworks come in, like, like NICE, where we're going to be talking about job roles and what the skills actually are to fit those jobs. So um, there, there's still a lot to do. And I, and I, I will say it's very real. I mean, every, the respondents on this, you know, we have thousands of respondents on this survey and they are all saying that they are having a um, hard time hiring appropriate candidates. Sure, so is there a common um, skill set that they're that they're looking for? So, or does it vary? So, I mean, there's, uh, IT's evolved, IT's different than what it used to be 15 years ago. And so is there is there a, um, skill set on operational technologies, uh, hypothetically speaking, that, that, that might be a more in demand today that used to not be in as much demand. So where, where specifically are gaps? So uh, I think, you know, really, like I said, the one that they're hiring the most for right now is technical cybersecurity skills. And I think when they're saying technical cybersecurity skills, that's broad, right? Like we could be talking about monitoring, we could be talking about responding, but when we start looking at, at some of the tools um, I think that's where they're seeing a lack of technical acumen, right? And so I think even getting people kind of skilled up in some of the basics, um, you know, understanding Linux environments, understanding packet analysis, uh, things like this are going to be helpful. Um, and then, like I said, there was further down the list, we would see things um, about more about business um, acumen and soft skills, right? And so I think, you know, we've always said you know, technical people sometimes have uh, trouble putting the technical um, issue at hand into a business term for the executives to understand. That conversation has to continue um, and to help people move into uh, future roles in management. But right now, when we're looking at, you know, kind of the, the, the hands-on capability, we need to make sure before we're, we're worried about promoting them that we're getting the right people in there with the solid solid technical skills. Thank you for listening to this episode of Firewall Chats. Stay tuned for part two, where we will continue our discussion with Ajay and Shannon about hiring cybersecurity professionals, how to talk to cybersecurity with C-suite executives, and how ISACA is adapting their own products and resources to address the evolving cyber threat. If you enjoyed today's discussion, you can find more Firewall Chats episodes on our channel, or you can visit www.it-isac.org.